Are you guys tired of using the same boring basic fonts? Is simply changing the text color just not cutting it anymore? Well, today I'm gonna show you how easy it is to create custom one-of-a-kind fonts that will set your design apart. I'm gonna be looking at Etsy, showing you this simple mama design here that's been selling millions and millions on Etsy. You can look at the reviews. I've done my market research. This is a clear winner. But if you guys look at all these designs, they are all very, very similar. Everybody's mamas and mamas are all doing the same thing. There's no character, there's no uniqueness, but that's all about to change. In this video, how to create a step-by-step unique font that's gonna stand out from the competition without breaking the bank. Now, as always, I'm gonna do my best to keep costs low by using as many free tools as possible, but for the best results here, I am gonna be using a paid Kittle account for most of the editing. I've been preferring Kittle because it's super easy to use. If you guys are not familiar with Kittle, we've been using it for months now, and honestly, it's been one of the best all-in-one image editing tools out there. Best part, it's web-based, so you don't need to download anything. It just works right out the box. And if you don't have Kittle, don't worry. You can still follow along with their free plan and you can decide later if you want to export that print ready file. Now, the next tool we're also going to be using, it's called Playground. And even their free version is more than enough for what we're doing. So let's take a quick look at what Playground has to offer. So I'm currently logged into their free account. If you look at their different plans, they have a free account, they have a pro account. The free account, as I mentioned, it's plenty for what we're doing. It allows you to create 15 new images every three hours and you can use it commercially. So there's really nothing to lose here. So that's what we're going to be using as far as our tools. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at Playground and everything that it has to offer. This is basically my favorite section here. They've got some really great realism templates, especially their realistic lettering, like I said. Let's take a look at this. You'll be able to see all that it has to offer. You've got this bling diamond right here that looks pretty good. Here you've got an S that has some seashells there. You've got a water S. You've got a nice S here for kids. I can imagine this on a onesie or a toddler shirt would be really great. You've got that crochet look. A lot of nice fonts that are really basic, but you can actually tweak them with AI. Now, if you see the pro here, that means you're not able to use it with the free account, but there are some still very good uh, templates here. So I'm just gonna borrow this S right here and use this look. What is cool about this is, let's say I wanna use this S design, I wanna change it to an M. So let's change the M. We're gonna keep the same color. You can actually tweak the size or the color here, but I'm just gonna do change to M, basic right here. And let's see what it actually is able to generate with AI. And with the pro version, supposedly you're able to actually generate faster than this. I think this is overall pretty decent speed, but if you pay for the pro account, again, it's supposed to be able to do 150 designs and it is extremely fast. Now, this is the design that I got. If you don't like it, you can change it. If you like it, you can keep it. Let me try to do it again. Change to M with less roses. I think it overall looks really good, especially with DTF, we can really print some realism stuff, but I didn't really like, um, where I thought there was too many flowers here, so I wanna try to repopulate it and see if it'll fix that uh, flower issue. It did the same thing, but I think it looks pretty good. Let me just save this as a sample first and then I'm just gonna export it first. So let's export this. Now with the pro version, you can upscale it, you can remove the background, you can upscale 4X. All these options are available with the pro, but because I'm using the free version, I'm gonna download it without the background, but that's not gonna be an issue because I have got Kittle to help me fix these images afterwards. After I get the M, I'm gonna do change to an A. So let's change this to an A. Again, I'm using the most basic prompt. This is very generic prompt. You can get into depth here, change the color of everything. You can do a lot. So I'm just gonna show you basic what it can do. You guys get the idea and I'm sure you guys can come up with something really, really good afterwards. I, I don't even know if this is the same color as what I had previously, but again, I am going to save it. I want to see different options and actually be able to use it. So 
Let's try to do this one and change uh, to M with same size of flowers and colors. Let's try that because I imagine that other M having a much bigger rose than that. So I'm not sure I have to kind of check my files after, but since I have this open, just gonna populate another one, really no big deal. I do want it to look very similar. There you go. I think this M is a lot better. The other one had three roses, but they're huge. I'm happy with this one. Let's export it. I've got my designs. Uh, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up Kittle. Let's go ahead and open up Kittle. We'll do a new project. Here are the settings that I recommend for DTF printing and setting up your artwork. I always change this to 300 DPI. That's the optimal resolution for DTF printing. And in this case, if you don't know the dimension that you're gonna be printing with, leave it like this or try to make it as big as possible. I think 83 by 83 inches is as big as you can get. In this particular case, I know that I don't want anything more than a 10 by 10. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make it a 10 by 10. So I know for simplicity sake, once I create this design and I pull it out to the edge of the artboard, I know it's gonna be 10 inches. Now that that's here, let's go ahead and go on to the left corner. We're gonna go to images and we're gonna go upload the designs. So let's go to downloads. And here is a brief look. This is the original one that downloaded. These are the two new ones that I have. So I like these two. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to upscale this. All right, let's zoom in real quick to see. It's still kind of populating, but it's getting sharper. You can look at the pearl beads here versus the pearl beads here. This one on the left, obviously sharper, but basically the thread and everything here is definitely more crisp. Well, let's do the same thing right here, upscale. All right, it's done. It just takes a little bit to refresh and you're gonna see it all of a sudden get a lot more crisp. There you go, very crisp. I think it looks great. Let's go ahead and now remove the background. So easy one click background removal. Also gonna remove background there, look at that. That did a really, really good job removing the background. There you go, remove the background there and there. I'm gonna bring this to the side right here. I think these are a little bit big because I'm, there's no way I'm gonna fit mama here like this. So let's just bring this down to like two and a half inches for now, and I will adjust it later on. They're pretty good height. I don't really need to worry about the edges. You see how the placement's a little bit different? I think it's actually centered properly. I'm gonna click on Alt and then Shift and then let go. And I just duplicated that like that. Overall, I think it looks good. I just need to shrink it so it will fit into the artboard like that. And then if I want to worry about the spacing, here's the spacing or there you go. Now it's spaced everything nice and even. If you need to uh, take a look at how it looks, you can click on mock-up and you can bring out a black t-shirt or any color t-shirt that you want. That's how the artwork looks. So it looks pretty good. It doesn't look like any of these basic fonts right here. And you've got a really nice design. So let's go back here. Let's go ahead and export this. Export setting is gonna be remove the background. We're gonna export it like this. And then we're gonna go back to a Kiddo AI. Curious to see how the restyling is going to look like. So I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna populate this right here. And I'm just gonna say, change this to a different floral uh, design. Let's just see how this looks. I have no idea. Um, you're taking a mama crochet design and um, you're seeing if it can generate something similar. I don't know if it's gonna do well or not, but either way, I'm just gonna show you how good that restyling tool is. It may or may not work for you, especially when you're dealing with something like this where it's really, really in realism. I don't know how the restyling honestly is going to show. It might be good, it might not. Let's see, okay, let's take a look. All right, here is what it came out with. I say it's terrible. It's definitely not what I want to print, but to create a mock-up like this is very difficult regardless. So it's just amazing what it can do. But if this is the design that you want, again, export it, and that's all that you really need to do. Once you have the export settings and files done, to order your transfer, transfersuperstars.com, you're gonna click on the transfer, and then you're gonna look for the gang sheet builder. Once you're at the gang sheet builder, you can start building 
your gang sheet here. We're just gonna start with a new gang sheet. I'm gonna upload this artwork here. And there you go. So once I populate this, true dimension is, it was 9.96 at, at 300 DPI. It has that green outline around it. That means it's good resolution. I am going to keep it like this. I think it's fine. And if you want to duplicate more, you can always click duplicate and it'll fill in that sheet. For example, this 22 by 12 sheet, I was able to get eight of these done in, in this one. So it is really, really a cost saver to be able to build your own gang sheet. So go ahead and rename this file. I would personally put the date on there just so that you can reference back to it, but continue with the checkout. We'll go ahead and get this printed so I can show you how realistic this looks and you can see how this looks on a sweater. So let's go. We've got our transfers ready. This was printed on our smallest gang sheet, which is a 22 by 12 sheet. And as you guys can see, I was able to put eight of these on here comfortably. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at the transfer so that we can take a look at all the details. So as you guys can see, all the little details came out. These look like real yarn pattern, real crochet, just really great job of how the AI did this. Really hard to create this, especially from scratch. So I'm overall very, very impressive on how this looks. And as you guys can see, I went ahead and fit eight of these on here comfortably. We're gonna go ahead and talk about the sweater that we're gonna be using for this project. Just like a lot of those Etsy listings that you guys are seeing, we're using the same sweater. This is a Gildan a G180. It's a 50-50 heavy blend, eight ounce sweater, and you can easily find this on Alpha Boulder for about $7, so super, super cheap, guys. And this is what they make and sell those sweaters on. So let's go ahead and get this prepped and set up. I'm gonna go ahead and use our cutter. All right, so I'm only going to be needing one of these transfers. Let's go ahead and give it a quick fold so I can get that middle point. All right, so it's right there. That's the midpoint. Let's get this set up. So I've got our Heat Master Prisma. Just gonna go ahead and turn on the laser system. I already have everything aligned. Two and a half inches is where I'm gonna be pressing at. And I have the heat press set at 300 degrees. We're gonna be pressing for seven seconds. And as always, we're gonna be pressing on heavy and firm. So make sure that you add a lot of pressure here. The more pressure, the better. So it's never bad to go overboard on pressure. So let's go ahead and pull the sweater up to the top of the neckline. And then we're gonna grab our transfer. We're just going to put it right here in the middle. This is the midpoint. Right. Now I'm gonna go ahead and peel right away, like so. You guys can see all the nice details. I peeled right away because these are nice and thick. Actually, I'm gonna give it a more of a textured look. So I'm gonna go ahead and use our finishing sheet here for the second press. Let's go ahead and turn off the laser so that we can take a look. There's a little thread there. I'm glad that did not hit the uh, transfer when I'm pressing it. So let's take a look at this. Wow, guys, look at that. That's Beautiful, beautiful design. It looks like sewn in right into the fabric. It's just really good without having to actually stick out and be something uncomfortable to put onto your chest. This is nice, very colorful, very, very detailed. I think overall it looks like a really great job. And I did this custom font using as many free programs as I can to really give it that unique look. So there you guys have it. I hope you guys learned something from this video. This is really, really game changing and I added a lot of value. Somebody can really jump on this business and do what I just did and more. So we'd love to hear your ideas. Let us know how we can help bring your ideas to life. My name is Phil, hope you guys found this helpful. Make sure you guys like and subscribe this so that I can come up with more content for you guys.